So in this set of Snap Circuits videos, we're looking at projects 489 and finishing the 500 series off with project 511. So project 489 is the hand control meter. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we've got our three volts powering our circuit on and off with our slide switch, which feeds our music IC, which outputs to our meter set to low and then goes through our R4 10,000 ohm resistor. And then we have our press switch, which we can hold down to have the music IC repeat. So if we turn on the slide switch, our meter goes up to about the six mark on there. And you see it bouncing a little bit as the music I see is playing the song on it, and then it goes to zero once it finishes. If we go to the press switch and press the press switch and hold it down, well, now we can keep the music I see on manually. And of course, we get to see, get to see that deflection on the meter. And if we release the press switch, well, then the music I see instantly stops playing. And we can turn it back on and keep it that way as long as we hold down the press switch. Now, likely the camera there can't pick it up, but, of course, the meter uses a small electromagnet in it to move the needle. And because of that, it's similar to a speaker and also how the motor works. So if you put your ear up near the meter here while the music I see is playing, you'll actually hear the music I see's output through the meter there with this little electromagnet. So that is how project number 489 works. So project 490 is the light control meter, so I will just leave the circuit on. And we'll take our press switch away and replace it with the photoresistor. And now that I've put the photoresistor in place of the press switch, as long as there's a sufficient light entering the photoresistor there, the music I see will stay on and keep looping, as we can see from our meter deflection there. Now if we reduce the amount of light going into the photoresistor, Basically, just by covering up, well, now it's no longer going to keep the music I see running, and of course, our meter stays at zero. And once we let light back in, the music I see starts back up and continues repeating. So that's how Project 490 works. Now, Project 491 is the electric control meter, so with that, we're going to take our motor and instead we're going to put it on the other side of the music I see. Because this is the hold function and this is the repeat function, which basically repeats the music I see if we want it to. So when we turn it on, the music I see will play one time. Okay, so it's gotten to zero there. Now if we flick the motor, the music I see restarts again. And that's because when we flick the motor there, we generate just a tiny amount of current there. And because of that, we can make the music I see's repeat function there turn the music I see back on again. And we can keep doing this just by flicking the motor a little bit. So that's how project number 491 works. Now project 492 is the sound control meter. And once again, like in previous projects, I have to point out a typo here. So I'm going to read this and you of course can read it there too. It says, use the circuit in project 489, which of course is this one here. Place the speaker, SP, which of course would be this part, cross points A and B, which of course is our repeat function. Turn on the slide switch, S1 in the meter M2, deflects and swings according to the rhythm of music when deflection stops. Clap your hands next to the speaker, the music plays again. The clapping sound vibrates the plates in the whistle chip, creating the voltage needed to trigger the IC. The speaker is not what you use here. You use the whistle chip. This is another typo by the company. You can try putting the speaker here and clap as hard as you can or blow into the speaker or things like that. It does not trigger the music I see. You are supposed to use the whistle chip. In fact, this is pointed out in previous projects that use the music I see in this configuration like that, that you're supposed to use the whistle chip. So I just point that out that that is another typo in the instruction manual. So the whistle chip is what you should be using on there, not the red speaker here. So turn on the slide switch and our music I see once again begins to play. 
playing, excuse me. And again, it finishes playing, goes to zero. And of course, you can clap or things like that with the whistle chip, or you can just tap on it. And just by tapping on the whistle chips, you can vibrate the metal plates in there, connecting them together, and that makes the music I see start playing again. So that's it for Project 492, so now we're going to move on to Project 493, which is the fixed voltage divider. So here we are with Project number 493, the fixed voltage divider. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's a pretty simple circuit here with our 3 volt feed going to our slide switch, and then we've got our 10 1000 ohm resistor here, and then it splits going to both our 5.1k resistor and then another path that goes through our meter and our 10,000 ohm resistor and then back to ground with our battery here. So we turn on our circuit. Our meter deflects over to about the 8 or 9 mark on the meter there. And the thing is they call it a voltage divider because while we have equal voltage across these two resistors, their currents are different. In fact, there's actually more current going through our 5.1k resistor than our 10k resistor. Roughly about half of the current is going through our 10k here. However, again, the voltage is the same, but the meter is only measuring it from this one. Now, if we took the meter and put it here instead and measured this one, we'd actually see that the meter deflects more to the right because more current is going through here. Because, this, again, this is acting as an ammeter, so it's measuring the current flow through there. So again, it's a pretty simple circuit showing uh, voltage measurements. Get a bug in here. So, anyway, that's project 493, so now project 494 is our resistor measurement. So here we are with project 494, the resistor measurement. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And instead of using a jumper wire like the book has, I just use a three snap here. So we set our variable resistor to the right to where we get the meter to deflect pretty much right on the 10 mark there. And then once we get that, we can take our three snap away, and we can put different resistors there, like our 100 ohm resistor also deflects around 10, indicating low resistance. And then as we creep up in resistance like with R2 here. Again, that resistor is fairly low, but the meter starts to decrease. We'll take 5.1k, and now our meter deflects to about the 8 mark, and then we'll take our 10,000 ohm resistor, and it's kind of in between 6 and 7, and then we can take resistor 100k, and you see it barely deflects above zero because the resistance is so high. So that's pretty much basically how Project 494 works, just measuring resistance. So now we're going to move on to Project 495 and a couple more of these. Have the automatic display letters. So here we are with Projects 495 through 500, the automatic display letters. And the first one we're starting is 495 with the letter B. So that's what it looks like on the book, and here it is on the board. So we got our circuit set up again like we've seen in a previous project with our 7-segment LED display with 3 volts being limited by our 100 ohm resistor, switched on and off by our slide switch, and then being controlled via our NPN transistor, which is being controlled via our photoresistor here and being limited by the 100,000 ohm resistor on the base there. So when light enters our photoresistor, it drains the resistor down to ground so our NPN transistor doesn't turn on, thereby not allowing our 7-segment LED to light. Now, if we block the photoresistor, then the current goes through the base of our NPN transistor and thereby turns it on so we can turn on our 7-segment LED display. So right now it's configured to display the letter B, so I'll just use a little flashlight here to control the light on our photoresistor so we turn it on so we turn the circuit on nothing shows up on our seven segment LED display because 
the resistance is low through the photoresistor, so it's just draining our resistor to ground. When I turn it off, the letter B shows up on our seven segment LED display because our NPN transistor has turned on. We let light back into the photo transistor and it turns it off. So that's how Project 495 works. Now Project 496 is the automatic display of the letter C. So E, D, and G. So we have E, D, and G. So we don't need C or F. Turn it back on. Again, we turn our circuit on with the light over that. Nothing shows, we turn it off. Well, now we get the letter C appearing on our seven segment LED display. Let light back in, and it goes out. Take it away, it comes back. So that's project 496, and now our project 497 has us displaying the letter D. So we need, let's see, B, C, D, E, and G. So we have B, we have C, put that in there. And then we got D, got E, and G. So do it as usual. Again, nothing happens when we got light on the photoresistor, take the light away, and we get the letter D appearing on our seven segment display. Put the light back in, it goes out, take it away, it comes back. So that's project 497. Now project 498 has us displaying the letter E. So we're going to connect A there, B, which we've got, D, so there's no C here, E, F, G, E, F, and G. Got it before, so cover it up and turn it on. No display, take the light away, and we get the letter E. In this case, it's more like a backwards 9, but you get the idea what they're doing. Let the light back in, comes back, take it away, and comes back. So that is Project 498, so Project 499, we're displaying the letter H. So we connect F, E, C, and G. So F, E, C, and G. Take B away, take A away, and we take... D away. So, F E C G. Yep. Get the light in, turn the circuit on. No display with the light there, take the light away, and we get the letter H, which is just kind of an upside down 4. Again, you see what they're doing. Light goes back on our photoresistor, it goes away, we take the light away, and it brings back the H. So, that is Project 499, Project 500. I have been displaying the letter O, so we just connect C, D, E, and D, C, D, E, G to the circuit. So, we get D, C, D, E, G, don't need F. Bring our light back, turn it on. Again, nothing displays, take the light away, and we get the letter O being displayed. Get the light back on our photoresistor, goes away, take it away, and it comes back. So that is project 500, so now we're going to look at projects 501 through 505, the hand control display. So here are projects 501 through 505. First one is the hand control display 1 and 4. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So it's a little more simplified circuit with our 7 segment LED display, just our 3 volts driving our 100 ohm resistor, limiting a current into it. And then we have our slide switch. Now the slide switch is actually controlling this side of the 7 segment LED display while C and B here are constantly driven, which is why we have the number 1. So we've got F and G connected to our slide switch off of this side. So when we turn that on, it gives us the number 4. When we turn the slide switch off, it gives us the number 1. Because again, B and C here are constant, but F and G are being switched. That's how we get the 4 being represented there. Because it turns on this segment and the middle segment, while these two rightmost segments, again, stay lit constantly. 
So that's how Project 501 works. Now Project 502 is a hand control display of 1 and 0. So what we're going to do is connect A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we don't need G for this. So we need to connect A. We got B. We're going to connect C, D, E, and F, which we've got. So it displays 1 there. We turn our slide switch and now displays 0 because that lights up the bottom two left segments and the top segment. Again, our two right segments stay lit the whole time. So that's how Project 502 works. Now Project 503 is the hand control display of 1 and 7. So we're going to connect A, B, and C. So we got A, B, C. So we're just going to pull these off. So we have the one always showing. A is the top segment, so when we turn the switch on, it gives us number seven. Turn it off and go back to one. So that's how Project 503 works. Now Project 504 is the hand control display of numbers one and eight. So we're going to connect A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we're going to connect all the segments. So I'm going to put that there here, up there, and I'm going to put G back with the segment where we got it. it is like so. So we got one there, turn it on, and it prints out eight. Because now we light all the segments. So that's how Project 504 works. So now Project 505 has this hand control display of 1 and 9. So we connect segments A, B, C, D, F, and G. So we just take E out of the equation. And we turn the slide switch on. And now we get 9. Because we're lighting all the segments except for E in that scenario. So that's it for Project 505, so now we're going to move on to Project 506, which is the motor monitor capacitor charging and discharging. So here we are with Project 506, the monitor capacitor charging and discharging. There it is in the book and on the board there. So we got our three volts again with both our slide switch and our press switch. And in this case, our slide switch is sending power to our 100 microfarad capacitor only being limited by our 5.1k resistor there with our meter completing the connection here so we can see the capacitor charging and then when we want to discharge the capacitor we use our press switch and connect our meter to the other end here and then we can see the capacitor discharging so first we need to charge up the capacitor so we connect our meter there set to the low setting we turn on our slide switch our meter deflects all the way to the right and slowly goes all the way down to zero as that capacitor charges up so our capacitor is fully charged so we turn the slide switch off and now we move our meter to this side and now we press the press switch and now the stored energy in the capacitor will discharge through our resistor and we'll see it on our meter Press press switch, deflects all the way to the right, and slowly goes all the way back to zero as the capacitor discharges to empty. So now there's no energy stored left in the capacitor, so of course we can repeat this process by bringing the meter back over here. We can recharge the capacitor, and we can bring it right back over and discharge our capacitor. So that's how project number 506 works. Now project 507 is the hand control space meter. So here we are at project 507, the hand control space meter. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we got our setup with our 3 volts being switched by our slide switch there. Going through our 10,000 ohm resistor. 
get our meter connected across that and the output of our space for IC, which is also being fit. Then we have our negative and our press switch to restart the space for IC when it finishes. So when we turn on the power, nothing happens at the moment. We press the press switch to activate our space for IC and we see our meter deflect. And then when the space war finishes, it goes back and we can restart it. And the space where I see will cycle through its different sounds as we push the button. And you see it came back. And at times you might actually be able to see the meter deflect a little bit back and forth depending where the space where I see is in its sound profile. Get a little deflection there. And then it ended, so it started again, and started again. So that's pretty much how Project 507 works. And now we're in the home stretch, Projects 508 to 511, the rhythm swinging meter. So here we are in the last bit, Projects 508 to 511. So we have the rhythm swinging meter. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we get our three volts going to our slide switch to turn it on and off the circuit. Our 10,000 ohm resistor connected with the output of our meter here, going from the output of our alarm IC. And we've got inputs two and three connected there. So we turn it on. Our meter will deflect back and forth as the alarm IC sound effect plays. And I believe it's supposed to be playing the uh, laser gun sound effect in it is why it's going on and off like that. As you see it way back and forth. And again, if you put your ear up to the meter, you could probably be able to hear the sounds from the alarm I see. So that's how Project 508 works. Now Project 509 is the police car sound with whistle chip. So we're going to take our whistle chip where did I place the whistle chip? I just had it. There it is. And we place it over top our resistor there. And let's see. Watch G and H. And connect the three snap across C and D. So we just have the middle portion there. Turn on our circuit. And now we get a police car sound effect coming out of our whistle chip. And we can see our meter deflecting back and forth like this as the police sound effect plays through there. So that's how Project 509 works. Now Project 510 is a fire engine sound with the whistle chip. So we're going to leave that connected. But now we're going to connect point one. And so now we get a fire engine sound coming out of our whistle chip and you can see as the sound goes up and down, the ammeter there shows us that as well as the meter deflects to the left and then back to the right and then back to the left, up and down slowly. So that's how Project 510 works. So now Project 511 is the ambulance sound with whistle chip. So we're going to leave this one connected along with that, but then we're going to take a snap wire and connect our first point here, and then connect it to our point here on the whistle chip, and we should get an ambulance sound. And now we get an ambulance sound coming out of our whistle chip, and again you can see our meter deflecting back and forth with that ambulance sound. So that's it for Project 511, and that concludes this set of Snap Circuits videos, and the Snap Circuits videos for this year, and the whole SC500 system. That was the last project. So next year we now get to start on the SC750, and even though this says there's 692 projects, that's because the SC750 has the computer interface which has the next set of projects that that one has. So next year it will be the SC750.